Today's gospel is filled with such depth, but I'd like us to take the moment to look at the movement of Jesus Christ into the situation here. So first off, we begin with chaos. We're in a storm, a tempest. The waves are all over the place. The wind is blowing and howling. But this chaos is not just something that happens on the Sea of Galilee. It happens in our lives. You turn on the news, the world seems to be very much in a state of chaos. That's why I say it's a bad idea to turn on the news, and I don't turn on the news. I get it in the paper, because at least I can always put the paper down. It's much harder to do turn off the news than it is just to put the paper down. But the chaos can also be beyond just the worldly. The chaos can be also amongst our family and friends. Fighting that happens, grudges that are held, people who we haven't talked to for ages, can even happen here in our parish. I know it's very hard to believe. Notre Dame is a perfect place, but it can even happen here in our own parish where maybe we have jealousy or anger or we would look at the other person and we have judgment towards them. And so when this chaos happens, we see Jesus Christ enters into it. See, Jesus could have just stayed on the mountaintop in prayer, but he chooses to enter into the chaos. That's the first movement of Jesus Christ into this. He goes into the chaos. He enters into our lives. He enters into the messiness. He enters into the world. The second, he reminds us to not be afraid. See, when things get so chaotic, when things you know, become such a huge mess, like perhaps as we see now going on in so many parts of our world, and even in our own country, it's easy to become afraid. But we're called to go into it. I always loved when you read about Pope St. John Paul II's pontificate. Obviously, he was known for his sharing of his words, be not afraid. Well, they weren't his. He took them from Jesus, but not a bad person to steal his words from. Because he entered into a world of communism, into a world where things were going crazy with the Cold War, and even after the upheaval of communism, still the uncertainty that faced so many different people in so many parts of the world came in, be not afraid. And then lastly, we have the call of Jesus, his response even to the times when we fall out of faith. When we see Peter get out of the boat, going towards Jesus, trying to be closer to Jesus, he goes out of the boat in faith. You have to have a lot of faith to get out of a boat in the middle of the sea, all right? Don't try doing it next time you go on a cruise ship, okay? I don't want to hear about people from our parish jumping out of cruise ships. But he goes in that faith. He follows in faith to Jesus because Jesus calls him. But even when he starts to sink, because he starts to have doubt, Jesus' hand goes out and stretches out for him. Now, this is wonderful to see this in Jesus, but yet we call ourselves Christians, little Christ. So us too are called to live just as Christ did here in our gospel. It can be challenging to empathize with those who are dealing with frustrations, who are dealing with despair. It's a lot easier to stay in our little tiny castles and to keep ourselves separate from them, but to see our neighbor, our friend, and perhaps even the stranger beside us, and to enter into their despair, to enter into their chaos. Some of you say, well, Father, I have enough chaos on my own. Too much chaos, can't handle it. Jesus enters into the chaos, and so too we do as well. To empathize with the challenges of that person Not to say that we know them, but enter into it with them. And then we call them to trust and to bring Jesus Christ in to their lives, just as we have brought Christ into our lives. We tell them, be not afraid. When the chaos is facing them and they don't think they can get away from it, because when the chaos is right here, it's really hard to see past it. But you tell them to not be afraid. Tell them that Christ is here with us. Be not afraid. And then lastly, when maybe they falter, you put out your hand to save them. You put out your hand to save them, to pull them up from the water. And if you fear that you too will drown, 
know that your hand is also up to our Lord Jesus Christ who grabs yours. We are called to be people who trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. But even when we don't, even when the despair overwhelms us, when our human frailty and our weakness, we start to sink, our Lord does not abandon us. He reaches out his hand for us and he pulls us up.